today I'm going to be reading chapter one of Into the Wild. I do stutter a lot while making these, so I'm trying to do better about that. It was very dark. Rusty could sense something was near. The young Tomcat's eyes opened wide as he scanned the dense undergrowth. This place was unfamiliar, but the strange sense drew him onward, deeper into the shadows. His stomach growled, reminding him of his hunger. He opened his jaws slightly to let in the warm smell of the forest to let the warm smell of the forest reach the glands on the roof of his mouth. Musty odors of of leaf mold mingled with the tempering aroma of all small furry creatures. Suddenly, a flash of gray raced past him. Rusty stopped still, listening. It was, it was, it was hiding in in the leaves, less than two tail lengths away. Rusty, Rusty knew it was a mouth. Mouse. <laughs> I keep calling him Rusky. He he could feel the rapid pulsing of its tiny heart within his ear fur. Uh, he sw swallowed, sniffing. He's what? I had to pause for a second. He swallowed, stifling his rumbling stomach. Soon his hunger would be satisfied. Slowly he lowered his body into a position, crouching for an attack. He was downwind of the mouse. He knew it was not aware of him. With one final check on his prey, on his prey's position, Rusty pushed back hard on his haunches and sprang, kicking up leaves on the forest floor as he rose. The mouse dived for cover, but head heading towards a hole in the ground, but Rusty was already on top of it. He scooped up into the air, hooking the helpless creature with his thorn-sharp claws, flinging it up, flinging it up in a high arc into leaf-colored ground. The mouse, uh, the mouse lay dazed but, but alive. It tried to run, but Rusky, Rusty snatched it up again. He tossed the mouse once more, and time, it's time a little further away. The mouse managed to scramble a few paces before Rusty caught up to it. Suddenly, a noise ro roared nearby. Rusty looked around, and as he did so, the mouse ran away, able to pull away from his claws. When Rusty turned back, he saw, he saw it dart into the darkness am among the tangled roots of the tree. Angry, Rusty gave up his hunt. He spun around, his green eyes glaring intent on the search, and the noise had crossed him. That the noise had cr cost him his kill. The sound rattled. The sound rattled on, becoming more familiar. Rusty blinked, opened his eyes. The forest had disappeared. He was inside of a hot and airless kitchen, curled up in his bed. Moonlight filtered through his window, casting shadows on the smooth, hard floor. The noise had been the rattle of hard, dry pellets of food as they were tipped into his dish. Rusty had been dreaming. Lifting his head, he rested his chin on the side of the bed. His collar rubbed uncomfortably around his neck. In his dream, he felt fresh air ruffling the soft fur where his collar usually pinched. Rusty rolled into, onto, <laughs> Rusty rolled onto his back, savoring the game for a few more moments. He could still smell mouse. It was the third time since, it was, it was the third time since full moon that he had had the dream. Every time the mouse had escaped his grasp, he licked his lips. From his bed, he could smell the bland odor of his food. His owner always refilled his dish before he went to bed. The dusty smell chased away the warm scent of his dream, but the hunger rumbled in his stomach, so Rusty stretched the, s stretched the sleep out of his limbs and padded across the kitchen floor to his dinner. The food felt dry and tasteless on his tongue. Rusty... Rusty reluctantly swallowed one more mouthful, then he turned away from his food dish and, and pushed his way out through the ca cat flap, hoping the smell of the garden would bring back the feelings of his dream. Outside, the moon was bright. It was raining lightly. Rusty stalked down the tidy garden, sto stoned cold and sharp beneath his paws. He made dirt beneath the large bush with glossy green leaves and heavy purple flowers. Their sticky sweet scent The sticky sweet scent collided the damp air around him. He curled his limbs into 
he curled his lips to drive the scent out of out of his nostrils. Afterwards, Rusty settled down on top of one of the posts on the fence, marking that marked his limb from the garden. It was his favorite spot. It was a favorite spot of his, as he could see right into the neighborhood garden, as well as into the dense green forest other on the other side that that sat on the other side of the garden fence. The rain had stopped. Behind him, close cropped lawn was bathed in moonlight, but beyond his fence, the woods were full of shadows. Rusty stretched his head forward to take a sniff of the damp air. His skin was warm and dry under his thick coat, but he could feel the weight of raindrops sparkling his ginger fur. He heard his owners give him one last call before, before the back, from the back door. <laughs> if If he went to them now, they would greet him with gentle words and and caress him and welcome him into their bed, where he would curl purring warm in the, warm in the crook of the bent knee of a bent knee of, of what but this time Rusty ignored his owner's voices and turned to gaze back at the forest. The crisp smell of the woods had grown fresher after the rain. Suddenly, the fur on his spine prickled. Was something moving out there? Was something watching him? Rusty stared ahead, but it was impossible to see or smell anything in the dark tree scent there. He lifted his chin boldly, stood He lifted his chin boldly, he stood up and stretched one paw, gripping each corner of the fence post as he straightened his legs and arched his back. He closed his eyes and breathed in the smell of the woods once more. It seemed to promise him something tempting him onward into the whispering shadows. Tensing his muscles, he crouched down for a moment, then leaped lightly down into the rough grass on the other side of the garden fence. As he landed, his bell collar rang out in the still night air. Where are you off to, Rusty? meowed a familiar voice behind him. Rusty looked up. A young black and white cat was balancing ungracefully on the fence. Hello, Smudge, Rusty replied. You're not going into the woods, are you? Smudge's amber eyes were huge. Just for a look, Rusty promised, shifting uncomfortably. You won't get me in there. It's dangerous. Smudge winked, winked, wrink, wrinkled, <laughs> wrinkled his, his black nose with distaste. Henry, Henry said he went into the woods once. The cat lifted his head and gestured with his nose over to the rows of fences towards the garden where Henry lived. That fat old tabby never went into the wo never went into the woods. Rusty scoffed. He's hardly ever been beyond his own garden since the trip to the vet, and he and he all he <laughs> all he wants to do is eat and sleep. No, not, no, really. He caught a robin there. Rust Smudge insisted. Well, if he did, then that was before the vet. Now he's complaining about birds because they're disturbing his dozing. Well, anyways, Smudge went on, ignoring the scorn of Rusky's meal. Henry told me. <laughs> Henry told me all. Told me. Oh my goodness. Henry told me our. What? Henry told me there are, are all. There are all sorts of dangerous animals out there. Huge wildcats who eat live rabbits for breakfast and sharpen their claws on old bones. I'm going. I'm only going for a look around. Rusty meowed. I won't stay long. Well, don't say I warned you. Purred Smudge. The black and white cat turned and, and plunged off the fence back down to his own garden. Rusty sat down on the coarse grass beyond the garden fence. He gave his shoulder a nervous lick and wondered how much of Smudge's gossip was true. Suddenly, the movement of a tiny creature caught his eye. He watched it scuttle under some branches. Instincts made him drop into a low crouch. With, no, with, with one slow paw after another, he grew his body forwards into the undergrowth. Ears pricked, nostrils flared, eyes unblinking, he moved forward to the, an to the animal. He could see it clearly now, sitting among the... the bar the barred branches nipping on a large seat to help between his paws. It was a mouse. 
Rusty knocked his ha- rocked rocked <laughs> Rust- Rusty rocked his haunches from from side to side, preparing to leap. He held his breath in case be- his bell rang again. Excitement coursed through him, making every make making his heart pound. This was even better than than his dream. Suddenly, the noise of cracking twigs. Br- the, suddenly, the noise of cracking twigs and crunching leaves made him jump. His bell, his bell dangled. Torochi, torochi. His bell jang, jangled treacherously, and the, and the mouse started away into the into the thickest tangle of bramble bushes. Rusty stood very st- stood very still and looked round. He could see a white tip of a red bushy tail tra- trailing through clumps of tall ferns up ahead. He smelled strong, stra- strong, strange scents. Definitely a, a meat eater, but neither cat nor dog. Distracted, Rusty forgot about the mouse and walked the red tail curiously. He wanted a better look. All of Rusty's scents strained ahead and prowled forward. He detected another noise that came from behind. That came from behind, but sounded mute in the distance. He swiveled his ears backwards to hear, to hear it better. Postups, he wondered, but, but, but he kept his eyes fixed on the strange red fur up ahead and continued to creep forward on it. He w- it was, <laughs> it was only the faint rustling behind him in a loud and fast approaching leaf crackle that Rusty realized he was in danger. The creature hit him like an explosion, and Rusty was thrown sideways into a clump of nettles. Twisting and yowling, he tried to, to throw off the attacker that had fastened itself on his on his back. It was gripping incredibly sharp claws. Rusty could feel spike, spike teeth prickling at his net. He writhed and squirmed from, from whisker to tail, but he couldn't free himself. For a second, he felt helpless. Then he froze, thinking fast, and flipped over on his back. He knew impulsively how dangerous it was to expose his soft belly, but it was the only chance. Lu- he was lucky. He he was lucky. The ploy seemed to work. He heard a huff beneath him. The breath was knocked out of his attacker. Thrashing fiercely, Rusty managed to wriggle free. Without looking back, he sprinted forward to his home. Behind him, rushing his paw steps, told Rusty that his attacker was giving chase. Even though the pain from his scratches stung beneath his fur, Rusty decided he would rather he would rather turn and fight than let himself be jumped on again. He he skid, skidded to a stop, spun around, and faced his perster. I'm the girl perster. It was another kitten with a thick coat of shaggy gray fur, strong legs, and a broad face. In a heartbeat, Rusty smelled that that a tom, and smelled smelled that it was a tom, and sensed the power of sturdy shoulders underneath a soft coat. Then, then the kitten crashed into Rust, Rusty at full pelt, taking him by surprise. Rusty turned about and fell and fell onto a dazed heap. The impact knocked the breath out of Rusty. He sta- and he staggered. Quickly found his footing and arched his back, puffing out his orange fur. He was ready to spring onto a nut, spring up in, into the other kitten, but his attacker simply sat up and began to lick it for a paw. All signs of aggression gone. Rusty felt strangely disappointed. Every part of him was tense, ready for battle. Hi there, kitty pet. The great Tom. The great Tom. Yeah, the great Tom cheerily. You put quite a fight for a tame kitty. Rusty remained on tiptoe for, for a second, wondering whether to, at- to, to attack anyway. He remembered his strength had. F- he <laughs> then he remembered the strength he had felt in the kitten's paws when he had pinned him to the, when he had pinned him to the ground. He dropped him to his pads, loosening his muscles and letting his spine unbend. And, and I'll fight you again if I have to. He growled. I'm Grey Paw, by the way, the kitten went on, ignoring Rusty's spirit. I'm training to be a Thunderclan warrior. Rusty remained silent. He didn't understand what 
what Grey, what's it, was mewing about. But he sensed all the threat had passed. He hid his confusion by leaning down to lick his ruffled chest. What does a K-pet like you be, do be doing in the woods? Why, don't you know it's dangerous? Asked Graypaw. If you're the most dangerous thing the woods has to offer, I think then I can handle it. Rusty, Rusty bluffed. Graypaw looked at him for a moment, narrowing his big yellow eyes. Oh, I'm far from the most dangerous. If, if uh, I were even half of a warrior, I'd be given intruders like you some some real wounds to think about. Rusty f felt a thrill of fear at these ominous words. What does what does the cat mean by intruders? Anyways, Great Paw meowed, using his sharp teeth to tug at a clump of grass be between his claws. I didn't think it's worth hurting you. You're obviously not from here. You're obviously not from the other clans. Other clans? Rusty. Rusty echoed, confused. Graypaw let out a patient hiss. You must have heard of the four clans. The four warrior clans that hunt around here. I belong to Thunder Clan. The other clans are trying to steal the prey from our territory, especially Shadow Clan. They're so fierce that they would have ripped you to shreds. No questions asked. Graypaw paused to, to split. To, 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 Graypaw paused. To split angrily and continued. They they come to take prey that is rightfully ours. It's the job of Thunder Clan warriors to keep them out of our territory. When I've finished my training, I'll I'll be so dangerous I have the other clans shaking their flea bitten skin. They won't dare come here near us then. Rusty narrowed his eyes. This must be one of the wildcats Smudge have warned him about. Live living rough in the woods, hunting and fighting each other for every last scrap of food. Yet Rusty didn't feel scared. In fact, it was hard not to admire the confident kitten. So you're not a warrior yet, he asked. Why? Did you think I was? Graypaw purred loudly. Then he shook his wide, furry head. It, it will be a real... I won't be a real warrior for ages. I have to go through training first. Kits have to be six moons old before they begin training. T Tonight is my first night out in its apprentice. Why, why don't you find yourself an owner? It would be nice and cozy in the house instead. Your life would be much easier, Rusty mouthed. There are plenty of house folk who would take a kitten, who would take in a kitten like you. All you have to do is sit, sit where, where they can see you and look hungry for a couple of days. And they'd feed me pellets that look like rabbit droppings in soft slop. Graypaw interrupted. No way! I can't think of anything worse than being a kitty pet. They're nothing but two-legged toys, eating stuff that doesn't look like food, making dirt and boxes of gravel, sticking their noses outside only when their two legs allow them. That's no life. Out in the wild, it's f <laughs> out in the wild, and it's free. We, we come and go as we please. He finished his speech with a proud split. The meowed mischievously. Until you've tasted fresh, fresh killed mouse, you haven't lived. Have you ever tasted mouse? No, Rusty admitted a little defensively. Not yet. I guess you'll never understand. Graypaw sighed. You weren't born wild. That makes a big difference. You need to be born with warrior blood in your veins, or or the feel of wind in your whiskers. Kittens born into two legged nests will never feel the same way. Rusty remembered the way he had felt in the dream. That's not true, he muted indignantly. Indignantly, I have trouble saying that word. Gray Paw did not reply. He studied. He studied. He studied. He studied stiff, stiff in mid -blick. One paw raised, stiff, stiff, sniffed the air. I could smell cats from my clan, he hissed. You should go. They won't be pleased to find you hunting in our territories. Rusty looked around, wondering how Graypaw knew there were any cats approaching. He couldn't smell anything but the leaf-scented breeze. But first of all, and, and no to urgency in Graypaw's voice. Quick! Graypaw hissed again. Run! Rusty Paw prepared, Rusty, Rusty Paw, Rusty prepared to spring into the bushes, but not knowing which way it would be safe to jump. 
He was too late. A voice spewed behind him, firm and menacing. What's going on here? Rusty turned around and saw a large gray she-cat strolling majestically out from the undergrowth. He was, he was, he was, she was magnificent. White hair stretched her muzzle, an ugly scar parted the fur across her shoulder, but her smooth gray coat shone like silver in the moonlight. Blue star! Beside Rusty, Gray Paul crouched down and narrowed his eyes. He crouched even lower when a second cat, a handsome golden tabby, followed the gray the gray cat into the clearing. You shouldn't you shouldn't be near gl- <laughs> you sh- you shouldn't be so near two leg places, Gray Paw, growled the golden tabby angrily, narrowing his green eyes. I know, Lionheart. I'm sorry. Gray Paw looked down at his paws. Rusty copied Gray Paw, crouching low to the forest floor, his ears twitching nervously. These cats had an air of strength. He had never seen any cat of in, a, in any. <laughs> These cats had an air of strength. He had never seen any of his garden friends. Maybe w- what Smudge had warned about about him was true. Who is this? She cat asked the she cat. Rusty flinched as the she cat turned her gaze on him. Her piercing blue eyes made him feel even more vulnerable. He's no threat. Rusty mute quickly. He's not another clan warrior, just a two-legged pet from the beyond the territories. Just a two-legged pet? The wor- words inflamed Rusty as he... But he held his tongue. The the warning look from Blue Star, from Blue Star's there, told him she had observed anger in his eyes, and, she, and he looked away. This is Blue Star. She's the leader of my clan. Rusty Paw, his... T- Rusty Paul, <laughs> you're calling him Rusty Paul. Great Paul hissed to Rusty under under his breath. And Lionheart, he's my mentor, which means he's training me to be a warrior. Thank you for the introduction, Great Paul. Meowed Lionheart coolly. Blue Star was still staring at Rusty. You fight well for a two leg pet. She meowed. Rusty and Great Paul exchanged some confused glances. How could she? How could she know? We have been watching you both. Blue Star went on as if she had read their thoughts. We have wondered, we we wondered how, how <laughs> we wondered how you would deal with with an intruder, Gray Paw. You attacked him bravely. Gray Paw looked pleased at Blue Star's praise. Sit, sit up now, both of you. Blue Star s- looked at Rusty. You too, Kitty Pet. He sat up immediately and held Blue Star's gaze. He even. Even as she addressed him, you, you, re- you reacted well to his attack, Kitty Pet. Gray Paw is stronger than you, but you used your wits to defend yourself, and and you turned to face him when when he chased you. I I've not seen a Kitty Pet do that before. Rusty managed to nod his thanks, taken aback by such unexpected praise. Her next words surprised him even more. I have been wondering how you would perform out here, beyond the two-leg place. We patrol, we patrol this border frequently, so I have often seen you sitting up on your on your boundary, staring out into the forest. And now, at last, you have dared to put to to place your paws here. Blue Star stared at rest, stared at Rusty thoughtfully. You see, you seem to have natural hunting ability, sharp eyes. You would. You would have caught that mouse if you hadn't hesitated so long. Really? Rusty stammered. Lionheart spoke now. His deep meow was respectful and not insistent. Blue Star, this, this is a kitty pet. He he would not be hunting in Thunderclan territory. Send him to his send him home to his two legs. Rusty pricked at, prickled at Lionheart's dismissive voice. Send me home? He mewed impatiently. Blue Star's words had made him glow with pride. She had noticed him. He had been impressed. He, she had been impressed by him. But I've only got. But I've. <laughs> but I've only come here to hunt for a mouse or two. I'm sure there's enough to go around. Blue Star had t- turned her head to his, to to acknowledge Lionheart's words. Now her 
Her gaze snapped back to Rusty. Her blue eyes were blazing with anger. There's never enough to go around, she spat. If if you didn't live such a soft, uh, overfed life, you would know that. Rusty was confused by Blue Star's sudden rage, but but one glint at the horrified look on Grey Paul's face was enough to tell him that he had spoken too freely. Lionheart stepped into stepped to his leader's side. Both warriors loomed over him now. Rusty looked into Blue Star's threatening stare, and his pride dissolved. These these were not cozy f fireside cats he was dealing with. They were. They were mean, hungry cats who were probably going to finish what Greyhawk started.